Y bienvenidos, welcome. My name is Byron Gonzalez. You're here on the Latin Alt Radio on Instagram or on YouTube, depending on where you're tuning in. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I am joined by two members of the alternative power rock group, Astra. There's a little double A, so I don't know how you say that A, but we got Carlos Calvo and Guillermo Morales Vitola here with me to talk about their brand new music and also their brand new music video that they just recently released called uh, Four Energizer Honey. How are you two doing today? Thanks for joining me. Hey, Byron. Thank you, Byron. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you for, for taking time out of your day. Um, so you're basically based in Los Angeles. Like um, I know Guillermo's in Los Angeles, but today, Carlos, you are in Bogota. How's it going over there? Yeah, pretty cool. Nice sunny day here. Uh, crazy country. So pretty special for making music. <laughs> oh yeah, it has uh, has it have, has things lighting up over there. I know there was a lot of commotion going on recently, but it's getting better. Yeah. Um, for the most of. part, yeah. Kind of. <laughs> We're in a crazy year. Everything that happened last year. And a lot of social things are making things get crazy. But I think this kind of things are great to make a country like ours evolve. Yeah, and stronger. You come out stronger out of uh, anything, you know, even personally. If you uh, witness or go through something hard, you're, you, you, whatever doesn't kill you make you stronger. Absolutely. Yeah. And how about you, Guillermo? And you're, uh, you were telling me in Utah. Well, yeah. uh, what are you doing over there? Um, escaping a little bit from, from my day to day. Um, a lot of hiking, uh, national parks. That's um, beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's been great. Um, today I'm supposed to go to Zion. Uh, so it's going to be eye opening. So, oh, I've never been. I always seen pictures and it looks beautiful. Yeah, hopefully, but... hopefully something will inspire you to write more music, too. Exactly. That's the whole point why I'm here. <laughs> nice, nice. So I want to know, how did you two find each other? How did you two um, end up wanting to create a band together? I know Guillermo has been in bands. He's been a drummer for a while. Um, but how did you two end up crossing paths? Charlie, you want to hey, tell Charlie. the story from the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from the beginning, since you were born. <laughs> I know. I know, yeah. yeah. We are close from a long time ago. So we met each other at a music store by mistake, I guess. <laughs> or or luck. Or Were you reaching for the same album and your hands touched? No, no it was not a music <laughs> store. It was a, 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 mus I mean, a, a musical instrument store. Oh, okay. So you reach for the same guitar and your hands were touching. Um, and that's when you we were, were there to fix uh, his snare drum. And I was uh, with my drummer <laughs> at that time. And we met at that point, uh, across some words, but it was fun. It was crazy. That one month later, we were seeking for a drummer and some friend of us uh, told us about Guillermo and that he was the drummer for what we wanted. And since 15 years old, we are together making music, sometimes together as a band, sometimes uh, collaborating or whatever. But that, that was the beginning of it all. And now you know, on the quarantine, we started talking again that we weren't uh, absolutely happy with, with, with what we're making musically in our lives. And that why we don't start making music. And well, there that, we go. Astra. That was the beginning of Astra. Exactly. That's really cool. And, and I know, so you're, you're, oh, Carlos, you also are a metalhead. I know Guillermo is a metalhead, but you too? <laughs> Or you just like the hard rock stuff? Um, I'm into alternative music uh, at the beginning. Then I got into clubs and electronic music. Um, I guess what take, took me there 
was uh, nine inch nails because he they used a lot of these um like techno based uh beats the that led me to house music to techno to club music and in other way to uh trip hop and all that stuff and i have all that on my head <laughs> Okay, okay. And so kind of I can I can kind of sense that influence in, in this new band. Uh, Guillermo too, are you also kind of in, in his realm of music? Is that where you get your influence too? Or you're still kind of a uh, still big metalhead? Well, I think that I, I probably I don't know if I would consider myself a metalhead. I enjoy listening to 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 some bands, of course, but it's not something that I would, you know, listen to on a normal basis okay. uh however if, if 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 you told me hey guillermo there's a there's a concert of i don't know like uh, whatever metal band um uh, let's say meshuga is playing the palladium hell yeah i'm there <laughs> but um i get even more excited by things like hollow notes you know i mean the classics all the hits Yeah, uh, I would consider myself someone like a, as a pretty classical guy in terms of you know the, all the hits, for example, okay. Led Zeppelin, Led Zeppelin, The Beatles. But um, I gravitate also on the electronic uh, realm as well. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's been a, a very big influence on me for a long time. And how, how did you two come up with Astra? Like, what is, what is, if you had to say something for the mission behind Astra, what would you say it is? I think it all came down to a moment of realization when, when we were experiencing the first lockdown back in May, more or less. Um, I, I don't know if it happened to you, but... Uh, you know, those first weeks were crazy and, 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 and you had the opportunity to actually pay attention to your surroundings and not be, I mean, not being so much self-involved and, and more aware of, you know, there's more birds, there's, you know, different sounds like nature came together, uh, no traffic, no one went outside. Oh yeah, and that was great. <laughs> it was great. I miss that. <laughs> and um, I think that um, we have taken so much of, of, of the earth that it's, it's a pity. And what we wanted to do is, you know, like pay homage to, to the earth and give something back and to raise awareness and be conscious just be conscious and, and, and Astra, you know, has several meanings. And one of those meanings is uh, that you have to invoke this um, weapon to a deity. And, and, and basically we think that we can relate to that part where we think our music is the weapon and the songs are our ammunition. And uh, we just want to, spread awareness and uh, consciousness <laughs> well said well said i think uh you can tell in some of the new i mean one of your songs is called fake news so and that also goes to show uh, of how you want to like get across to people you're kind of like political but not political you're more environmentalist i guess right yeah um who who's the main songwriter carlos are you the main songwriter or is it kind of like a team effort between both of you There's no main person here. No. We are creative minds. We try to give our bests, and sometimes uh, Guillo have a great idea that, um, by the way, he sends me, and it's crazy what happens because when we work this way so far, what you get, you uh, can change it to another kind of thing, pretty crazy. And Guillo will receive another idea uh, really far from what he was thinking in the first time. But but it's the part and the cool part of the way we are working. 
Um, we try to give our best. We try to bounce things uh, back and forth all the time to get the songs. And that's the way it works. Uh, sometimes you are blocked and the other one is the big force that gets you out of that place. And sometimes we all work so together that is a crazy week, sending things every day, every night. Uh, sometimes we relax and get like two weeks without making music. It's, it's not like a formula here. Yeah, it's a, it's a collaborative effort. Uh, <clears throat> and as a matter of fact, I'm slacking because of being in Utah. I should be recording some stuff for Congress. <laughs> He's going to kill me when I get there. So <laughs> that's And that's interesting that you guys kind of formed during a pandemic, too, where you can't see each other. Um, and you're so far away, too. I mean, I think even if this collaboration happened with a pandemic or not, you would have to be sending each other music all the time. Uh, is this something that you you enjoyed was this process enjoyable for you and if, it, if 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 it was what did you like about it about having to record in distance i have enjoyed it a lot uh i think it it it, it is priceless to to you know not going into a studio um especially during a pandemic when when we didn't know what to do um uh, and how to you know, be around others. Um, and for me, it is a blessing that I can just, you know, put on some slippers and go into my humble studio and, and, and track some things down. Uh, that has given us a, the liberty of, and, and Carlos has his rig in his studio and in, in his house. Um, so, you know, whenever we have the time, it's like, hey, let's 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 um, connect or let's. Uh, I'm gonna send you something. And to me, it's been great. It's been great. Um, definitely, I think that uh, the pandemic was a spark that lit everything up. Um, that you know, got us together again. Um, and um, I think that. You know, who knows what's going to happen, but but I, I, I definitely believe that if we're not going to do the next record like this, at least we're going to be in the same space, um, but uh, fully creating and, and fully involved in, in the production aspect of it. And Carlos, what were your thoughts about this entire process? Um... Yeah, I think we got lo the love for music again and that's the main thing i don't care if it's this way or if we are together in a big studio or in a small house uh, with lots of instruments or just our main instruments the thing is all this happened to make us rethink about our lives and if we are doing our best because we can die any day we can die tomorrow the thing is when you die you can be sure that you gave your best that you enjoyed life that you enjoyed this gift that is life not every day is perfect not everything is perfect we live in a really complicated world but if we get the best out of it things will be really amazing and that's what we we are enjoying at this point if things go really well and we are playing together live shows in one month, that's amazing. But if that takes one year, let it happen. Uh, if we can release a lot of music, awesome. If we just make it and be really happy making it, it's, it's enough. So that's the point at, at we are now. I'm sorry about that, <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm really happy of just making music and loving it again because I was divorced with it for a really long time. I, I got to a point where I don't in, enjoy that and I don't enjoy the, the, the didn't enjoy the 
the making music process and how people received it and give you a feedback. And at this point, I don't care about anything of that. I just care about how happy we are with Guillo and we talk and share a little bit of our experience. Even if we're working a lot and we are really stressed, we get to Astra and that's our big release. <laughs> and that's really cool. I mean, uh, that goes to show Guillermo's a great person. I, I deal with him too during uh, for normal work and uh, it just goes to show. And I'm happy that you were able to find your love again because now you're making really good music and that you're able to find somebody that, that it comes so easy and that was able to re uh, just rekindle your love for music because it can be hard to come back from that, especially during a pandemic. And, and it also goes to show like, your love for music, your passion, like so many other bands also released music during the pandemic. And, and it just helps you as an artist create a different ways to, to make that. And I think that is a beautiful thing. And that's why I love artists. That's why I love musicians because they teach us that it can be possible, you know? I like that. <laughs> nice words, man. Yeah. I want to know, uh, how uh, what was i know that everybody was talking about your your collaboration with bunbury uh, and that's congratulations to you for for getting that for having him help you with uh, a song to being involved with you in the process but what was one of your memorable memories from that collaboration wow that it was it was a, a, a and it still is a very interesting moment that when when I go back or we go back, you know, look on, on looking on YouTube or something and we see Astra Bumburi, it's like, wow, we have to pinch ourselves. It's yeah. like, wow, this is real. <laughs> it happened. Um, he was super cool. I mean, he he went, you know, all in. He sent us, you know, like eight tracks worth of vocals uh, and some tracks with synthesizers and all the synthesizers that, uh, that that are there. I mean, he he performed them, and I mean, it was it was it was great. And the the, the most curious, not curious, but probably the most noticeable thing to me was when we were talking with with Charlie, and 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 then Enrique goes, "Oh, so let me know if you like it." We're like, <laughs> "Dude, when in our lives would have I mean yeah to judge." Have, that you guy know? right yeah like <laughs> he, oh you know what give me another take i didn't like that i mean who would say something like that you know i mean everything that he did was so spot on um and it's been a while since he since he you know has been i mean last time he sung that that way was you know uh probably like three records ago he's in a different mood right now and, wow so he gifted you like this piece of him for the yeah, song yeah it was it was it was really really amazing and we're super grateful and forever will be that's awesome congratulations again on that one that was a really good song i mean your songs are really good i love the hard rock and tunes Thank that you, you guys provide Thank you, um man. i want to get into this music video this lyric video music video lyric video same thing because it you and you incorporated both of them you know you see typical music um you see typical lyric videos and it just shows like a standard back uh, background and and the words. But you created a story here. I love that. Um, where did that come from? Where did this bunny persona come from? And what made you decide a bunny? You know, out of every uh, out of so many animals out there. <laughs> um, it all started with the the, the lyrics uh, talking about the energizer bunny, uh, the kind of. Um, word thing with the honey the energizer honey thing and the bunny got there like in the clouds and when we started talking about the video it was a lyric video but it was pretty simple the idea at the first point and we started talking and then we got to to make like a little story behind the video and why don't we make the story and be the lyrics part of the video making the graffitis or the whatever or uh this uh bunny 
kind of person uh crazy watching the lyrics uh, in his uh, altered reality and that led us to why don't we make this bunny be like the b-side of the bunny uh Gigi has a story about um snow white uh in disney like so pretty so so princess and then goes back uh backstage or something and started smoking and goes back and it's like this kind of person that is the bunny for the shows or the whatever or his life but his b-side is like this crazy kind of drunk addict crazy person that gets to these uh, spots where he steals the skate or steals uh, something from uh, another person or just goes crazy and ends pretty stoic. <laughs> um, how do you say that? <laughs> yeah, it just goes crazy. It goes off the walls yeah. eventually. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that was the idea. And it got pretty fine. And, and all the um, colors, uh, all the um, animations, yeah. get it like this um, B movies uh, mm -hmm. style or, and, and all that stuff that enriches a lot of the of the video. Yeah, I really like I like the fonts. I, actually, I'm a big font person. So I really like the fonts. It's always really hard to find the perfect font. And you guys found a few for it, which is really cool. <laughs> yeah, it was nice. Were you guys involved in the in the filming? Were you guys on set, or you just kind of had to like let the director just take it away? We 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 let them do their thing. Uh, at some point, uh, they were having, you know, Colombia and especially Bogota, you know, in in the tropics, uh, it rains a lot, and they they were a little bit behind, and they said, well, we can't go outside because it's raining so much, and the guy that's doing the bunny, got. I don't, I don't know what happened to him, but at some point, Carlos said, you know what, I'll, I'll do it. So Carlos almost um, mm -hmm. was the bunny. Um, but no, we, 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 you know, we talked about the idea and we uh, developed it with them, but uh, we just let them do their thing. That's cool. That's good that you put the trust in them. And uh, yeah. so, so this was uh, filmed in Bogota. Yes. Cool. Now I know a little bit more behind it. I was like, where is this place? It kind of yeah, doesn't look like LA, but no, nah, it's I was that's curious. Cool that. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. I have a few more questions for you. Um, a little more personal, but it helps me to know who you guys really are. Yeah. Um, I want to <laughs> know what was an album that you couldn't stop listening to when you were little? Oof. If you had a if you had to choose one album. <laughs> Kill them all. Kill them all. Uh, was an, uh, it was a good one. An opening album for my metal uh, part. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. I was going to say Metallica as well. I was going to say Ride the Lightning. Nice. The good choices. Yeah. And did you see the new Black Album anniversary that they're doing? Yeah. Y'all yeah. should make an unofficial cover for it. <laughs> yeah, we should do one song that I've always liked, but it's not their song. It's a Killing Jokes song. It appears in Garage Days. Um, um, the Wait. That's a Killing Jokes song, but Metallica's version is just great. It's much better. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to know what is one of the first albums one of the first concerts you ever went to? Hmm. Um, I remember a lot of uh, big concert here where Soda Stereo from Argentina played. Wow. And being there watching Gustavo Cerati was amazing for me at that point. Yeah. That's huge. And, that, and if that happens at this point, we'll be more amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was one of a kind. To me, I would say, I don't remember, I was like eight or nine years old. Uh, I, was, I wasn't living in the US back then, 
but my, my mother's family lives in, in the U.S. And I was visiting and my cousins took me to a Poison concert. Wow. Yeah. That's and I, I, I remember looking at their, at their albums and I thought they were girls. Remember when they would, you know, use yeah. lipstick and like, wow, they're hot. And then, oh, they're guys. Ooh. Yeah, they were like the glam rock, <laughs> glam yeah, metal. It was, it was weird. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Having um, the hots for CC the Bill uh, <laughs> and then learning he's a guy. Being <laughs> a straight kid, you know, like, not that there's anything wrong with that. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it just took you like, whoa, what the yeah, heck? Like, I didn't oh. know this was possible. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, they were very uh, uh, androgynous back then. Oh yeah. For the glam yeah. metal. Yeah. Um, what was the first job you ever held? The first job where you started making money. Huh. Even if it was like a little bit. <laughs> um, helping a sound engineer here. Oh, you started with music. That's cool. Kind of assistant. He was a drummer that we admired a lot at the point. And he took me to be his assistant engineer in some concerts. That's wow. Uh, As a first job. Yeah. That's You're why lucky. I got into all the sound engineer stuff. That's super cool. I think I, 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 when I first started like earning money, I think it was drum lessons. But that wasn't like a real job, you know, I mean, I mean, it is a job if you're money, if you're getting money. Yeah, but you know, I mean, without being without the responsibility, I mean, that's more like of a, an entrepreneurship or something. <laughs> yeah, that's a job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Oh, so you're just drumming your entire life. Yeah, I mean, I've, I, 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 I haven't stopped. I then, I, I, this is, this is very funny. I was a, a, a teacher. I, I, I was a teacher. And that's probably the, the, probably the time of my life that I have been the most like separated from music. Uh, to me, it was very easy back in Colombia of, of getting discouraged. Um, but it was with one concert that, and it, it was actually a, a, a a concert that Calvo Carlos was was doing. He was performing, and uh, I mean, we were all friends, and I was just there hanging out. And I remember saying to myself, "Wow, I'm just I'm just not gonna go back to 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 my old self again. I, I, I this is what I want to do." At that time, I was studying marine biology, but anyway, I mean. I, I was a teacher for, for a while and um, that that probably gave me some structure and uh, I wanted something steady because as I said, I got discouraged many times because back back then, you know, you would play a lot, do the whole circuit thing and then play festivals, probably tour outside the country and then you repeat. There's no mu There's not much more to go to rather than wait for next year, play at the coolest or biggest festivals there are over there, and then in the hopes of doing another tour. So it's easy to 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 get discouraged, and that's why I probably thought you know I I, I need something else. But, wow, that's um, a complete turnaround from being a professor for like a marine biology into music your passion that's cool yeah that's weird <laughs> <laughs> it's weird but very cool that you were able to like center yeah. yourself and you're like i gotta go for my dreams yeah absolutely it nice. was it was in during sound check i remember uh charlie was playing with daniel who now lives in spain and he also is in the music industry and he had a, a friend of ours who his name is john and he was uh he now lives in in florida and I remember I was like drum teching and, um, but you know, we were teenagers. So we were like hanging out. We, <laughs> I wasn't calling it, oh, I'm the drum tech, you know? And while I was doing that, that's when it hit me. I said, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Nice, nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. I got my final question for you guys. 
What is your favorite food? Ooh. <laughs> Huh. Anything that comes with chocolate. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, Chocolate's very hard to put down. Yeah. 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 Tell me about have it. some bacon with it. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's addictive. Yeah. Um, chocolate pancakes, chocolate waffles, Nutella. Chocolate everything. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> chocolate mousse with more chocolate. With <laughs> I don't know. I think that my favorite food, and this is, I mean, you're going to say that this is a cliche, but I would say Italian food's my favorite. Uh, but I mean, I have a very, very sweet spot for Thai. I mean, I am gaga over uh, yellow curry. Okay. Uh, that's That's just ridiculous. I mean, I can eat that every day. That's funny. You know, I asked Natalia Laforcade the same thing, and she loves Thai food. Yeah. She can't live with Thai food. Yeah. <laughs> ridiculous. And in LA, you know, man, I mean, we have so many good options. And yeah, it's an intense, a yeah. great Thai population out here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. cool. Well, hey, guys, thank you again for joining me. Thank you for giving. Oh, what's up, Guillermo? What's, what's your favorite food, man? Mine? Yeah. <laughs> I... Fridays, when I can, I go for sushi, sushi or or aguachiles or ceviche. Any any oh seafood God. is like my favorite. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> seafood on. hands down. <laughs> well, well, thank you guys. Thank you guys for taking your time uh, to speak with me to give us more details about your latest project and uh, some more details about Bunbury and your new music video, which is available now on YouTube for Energizer Honey. Go check it out if you haven't already. Uh, this is Astra, Guillermo, and Carlos. Thank you guys so much. Thank, Thank you, Byron. Byron. Thank you for, 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 you know, for, for making time and, 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 and doing this. And we all love Latin Alt and we appreciate you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything else you would like to tell the audience that I may have missed or maybe something that we can look forward to in the coming months? Um, Carlos visit. Carlos visit to LA. We're gonna hang out. Yeah. Nice. I'm gonna be there, and all the time releasing music, man. Showing him the the the, the wonders of Thai food out here. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> also, oh, a lot of food tours there. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys again. I hope you enjoy your your day, and your we're almost close to the weekend. On the day of this recording, we're almost to the weekend. So I hope you enjoy your weekend. Thank you. You too, man. Take Thanks, care. Man. Bye. Adios.